Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Hester Biosciences Limited Q1 FI23 Financial Results Conference Call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all the participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rohan. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Seema. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Hester Biosciences Q1 FY23 Earnings Conference Call. Today, we have the senior management with us, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, CEO and Managing Director, Ms. Priya Gandhi, Executive Director, and Mr. Nikhil Jawa, CFO, on this call. I thank the management for giving ICICI Securities team the opportunity to host this call. Over to you, sir. Uh, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, everybody on the call. As always, nice being again uh, um, once in three months with all of you and uh, present to you the working of our company, Hester Biosciences. The results were declared today. The press note has also been circulated, and I'm sure you have both these documents with you. Uh, this is one of those rare times uh, after a very, very long time that I'm addressing everybody with uh, results which show a down in the revenue as well as a down uh, on the profitability side, etc. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, first let me just go through briefly uh, the financials and then give you my uh, explanation for the functioning of the company, etc. Our sales revenues have gone down by 14%, and in that, if you go look, if you look at the sale of vaccines as against the health products, vaccine sales have gone down by 30%, while the health, health product sales have gone up by 42%. Now, the reason for the profitability to go down is that the vaccines are much more profitable than the health products. Therefore, a decrease in the vaccine always leads to a decrease on the profitability in the company. At the same time, if you have noticed uh, uh, since the last two years, I've always been stressing that we as a company would like to de-risk and make sure that all divisions contribute equally to the top line as well as to the bottom line and we take on the business further so that at no point of time do we get uh, stuck up because of one branch doing bad or one branch doing good, um, etc. On the vaccine side, the reason for the low sales being on a comparative basis is that the corresponding quarter last year was last to last year was exceptionally good because it was a disease situation in the country while there were it was an impact on covid but uh, because of the disease situation we had an unprecedented sale for a few of our vaccines and that pushed up the sale to a extremely high level so one issue is that this quarter we are com uh, the last year's quarter we are comparing to an exceptionally good poultry vaccines quarter year before last. So that on a relative basis also that makes a difference. On looking at it absolutely in this year, uh, the poultry industry has been going through a lot of problem in the last uh, one year's time or at least nine to ten months' time. Feed prices have gone up, poultry production costs have gone up, so inputs Everything has gone up. Output has not, it's not even just been stable, but at times it has even gone down. So it has impacted the poultry a lot. And many poultry farmers have reduced the population of the birds at their farms. So there has been an actual degrowth. It is not that we have lost any market share at all. There has been a degrowth in the poultry industry, which has led to this lower sales. Also, there has not been any ex uh, exceptional condition as which was there last year. So these are the reasons why, uh, due to which the health, pro uh, the vaccine sales have gone down. 
we have been continuously pushing all the division and the health product division did well showing a growth of 42% but on the other side the profitability of the health product is lower than that of vaccine so that has impacted the bottom line having said that we are taking things further and we while we will continue to push the health product division harder and harder to get higher and higher sales we are definitely looking into the profitability situation as far as health products are concerned even uh, last year the input costs on the health product all raw materials went up tremendously we were not able to pass on those costs on to the consumers so by way of that we have lost in our profitability which otherwise was planned on the last two last years margin but we could not achieve those margins just because we could not pass the cost on and it's not that we could not we did not want to uh, pass on these costs we are growing growing our business we are stabilizing stabilizing ourselves and at this point we did not want to unnecessarily rock the boat too much by con- completely pushing on our cost on to the end user so these are the reasons for which uh, uh, we have had uh, a downside on the profit and the sales side because of the less sales in vaccine uh, another uh, thing is that uh, we have also been putting in a lot of effort last year on the market development side we have hired people our team has grown up by one and a half times over what it was at the beginning of the year so all these costs have gone in and uh, the outputs of course on the poultry side we have not been able to get those outputs so these are these additional costs that have also put in had that have gone in another aspect while comparing the two quarters last year and last to last year please also keep in mind last to last year because of covid there were many restrictions on travel and therefore our cost on sales was relatively lower and this year it has actually been higher so at that time the cost were lower the sales was very high of poultry vaccine so everything fit in last to last year while everything is on the other side as far as uh, the sales is concerned but uh, having said all that going further from here we are very confident that uh, this thing is now going to be arrested i think with this quarter gone the few to gone we have definitely arrested the degrowth the downtrend and now we are definitely on a upward swing this is assured i mean you could take a take this as an assurance from me now uh, certain indicators which i can give you at the moment which would prove my point that we are now on an upside lumpy skin disease is a Uh, current big problem throughout the country we are one of the only suppliers of this vaccine and it has given us a tremendous sale in this quarter as far as lumpy skin disease is concerned we have reasons to believe that this vaccine would be used now on year on year basis uh, this vaccine is to be given to cattle once in a year uh, so the vaccine gives immunity for one year and then you have to again give it after a year so we hope that there would be a continuous repeated business as far as lumpy skin disease is concerned talking about the other vaccine ppr vaccine for sheep and goats the national tender was already floated we were l1 we have been uh, give, uh, given the mandate to supply the ppr vaccine across the country uh unfortunately the supplies did not start in the last quarter but we believe that they will start in this quarter in the next 30 days time that also is going to give us an extremely extremely big boost as far as ppr vaccine is concerned for supplies to all over the country the tender details are all public there is nothing uh, just known to us the requirement it specifies approximately 20 crores of uh, business uh, supplies to be made by us to the government in 15 to 18 months these months have already passed by these supplies could go uh, the time period for which they want the supplies may be lesser time so uh, that's one of the very very big upside that uh, we are looking at this point of time another thing is 
that you would have recently read in the papers just it was two days ago the government of india has now allowed uh, to manufacture and sell the h9n2 avian influenza vaccine for the poultry that also is likely to give us some boost uh, not a very big boost but it is definitely going to help us uh, give some boost because our other vaccines like the new castle disease vaccines etc we were giving them in a very fortified manner which was giving a lot of protection to birds against h9n2 but now we will be making a, a dedicated vaccine for h9n2 which will reduce the sale of our new castle vaccine to some extent but it will in, now directly give us sales in h9n2 so these are the indicators specifically on the poultry side and sorry on the vaccine side which give us reasons to believe that we have got a very big upwards uh, trend coming up for us in this quarter as well as in the coming quarter uh, last but not the least there is the pet care division we have launched the pet care division after i finish my talk i will request priya to talk a little bit on the pet care division she will give you an idea of uh, the uh, issues on in the pet care division other developments that we are working on over here in the company is we are currently looking at developing the classical swine uh, fever vaccine the sheep pox vaccine the new version of the brucella vaccine all these vaccines are under r&d and uh, hopefully in the next 6 months time to 8 months time we should be ready with these vaccines as well which would again give us some sales from all these three vaccines as you all recover uh, recollect we have uh, been expanding our animal vaccines infrastructure there are two expansions that uh, are on the way which are already fully paid for uh, uh, i mean the capex is already completed in both of them one being the bulk antigen production capacity so that's something which is about to uh, commence uh, and uh, we should be starting in the next uh, three months time and uh, that should give us a big boost and it will double the production capacity of our current vaccine so this could be used for poultry as well as a few large animal vaccines the other expansion uh, was for the fill finish that has got a bit delayed because we are uh, nothing to do internally nothing to do with us it's just that the supply of equipment we are dependent on uh, uh, international we are dependent on a foreign company and therefore there is a delay by them it is an unprecedented long delay as i said nothing to do with us we are just keeping our fingers crossed hoping to get the parts required and we soon get into it but that all that should start in q4 uh, sorry the bulk antigen would start in q3 itself while the fill finish would start in q4 it was a mistake um, that i made so <clears throat> these are the updates as far as uh, the poultry vac- the animal vaccines is concerned looking into the business of our subsidiaries hester nepal there also we went through a tough time in the last quarter because there were zero zero tenders from fao uh, but we have been talking to fao they say that now things are revising and they would start because the um, um, you know the mandate to fao is very clear towards eradication of ppr so they say that they are working hard towards it uh, we have reasons to believe that this tender business should start but as i mentioned in my earlier calls in my earlier quarters we are also now putting in a lot of effort from there to uh, get domestic business up now that activity is slowly gathering moss and therefore uh, hopefully the local business should also increase as well as we should start getting the tenders uh, from uh, fao for the ppr vaccine to be supplied to all across uh, the globe hester africa five vaccines have been commercially made we have got the uh, noc to start marketing three of them two we would be getting in the next uh, few weeks time 
and we are quite ready to take on uh, the marketing of these vaccines. Today, the situation worldwide being a little bit uh, on the recessionary side due to various reasons, inflation, the geopolitical situation. I mean, uh, the whole programs of African countries, though they had earlier committed to us, they are a little bit slow in that. But all this has to pick up and has to happen at some point of time. A lot of many of my comments are, um, you know, that it, this has not happened, that has not happened in India, in Nepal, in Africa. But at the end of the day, this far, but and how much far more? It can't just go on and on like this. And it's not just wishful thinking that it will all improve. I have full reasons to believe that things should turn around and we should be able to take things further. So Esther Africa, we are more or less said, we manufacture a pure lumpy skin disease vaccine over there. And today, if you see on internet, worldwide, there are problems of lumpy skin. They have suddenly shot up. We would again be one of the very few companies in the world through Hester Africa making a lumpy skin disease vaccine missing strain. And that also we are hoping that we should get a lot of international inquiries for that. And then CBPP and Gamboro vaccine, Newcastle vaccine in poultry um, and uh, PPR also from there for the Tanzanian market. So all our efforts are in, and uh, I think all of these efforts should pay off uh, now within the short time. Uh, <clears throat> we have a joint venture with Trishul on the distribution side. That company has also started performing well. In fact, though not mentioned in our press note, we have uh, sort of, uh, we are 50% owners, uh, uh, Hester, uh, Africa or Hester India, sorry, is a 50% owner of Trishul, where we have shown a quarterly profit of equivalent to 1.47 crores, which is 50% of the profit as, as much as our shareholding is concerned. So the actual profit is multiplied by two, a little over three crore rupees. So that is catching up and we are going to be doing a very aggressive distribution in beginning from Tanzania and then taking it further to um, first East Africa, then to Southern African countries, and then to West Africa. So this is all as far as our animal vaccines, health products business is concerned. Talking a little about the COVID vaccine, uh, the co-vaccine drug substance, which we have uh, um, an agreement with Bharat Biotech, for which we have got funding from Bireg. The project is at the moment, uh, we are having validation of the facility. We, uh, we just recently had a meeting with Bharat Biotech and we are putting in a structure so that by in the next uh, three months, or we should be able to go on stream and take up the first batch for the co-vaccine drug substance for Bharat Biotech for them to produce the co-vaccine vaccine. Uh, this facility, as I mentioned, it is a multi-purpose facility. It is not restricted to co-vaccine. Uh, there are many questions and even last time, what happens if the co-vaccine demand goes down? We have already put in a strong plan, what if? And we are ready to implement that plan the moment we get any indication on the changing demand for the a drug substance for the co-vaccine vaccine. So we are fully prepared. It is not of any concern to us at this point of time on what will we do with the facility in the event of uh, the drug substance not being required for the production of co-vaccine. So with this, I complete my uh, presentation to you on Hester, uh, on all its uh, um, matters, except for the PET, which I now give it i request priya to talk a little bit on the pet division to you priya yes thank you good afternoon everyone this is uh, priya gandhi uh, so sometime around the end of uh, quarter four in financial year 2022 uh, we as a company uh, wanted to uh, introduce the pet uh, pet division uh, to become an overall animal health 
uh, company to address various species just uh, along with poultry and animal health care. So uh, we decided to in include the pet division. Uh, while in quarter one, uh, our sales have been non-consequential, uh, the top, if I speak of the top line. However, there has been a lot of back-end working that has gone into uh, in the in the quarter. We have established a full-fledged sales force, uh, which works out of Delhi, Calcutta, Bangalore, Bombay to address all the four regions of the country. Uh, we've identified a couple of products. We already have 11 products which are out in the market. Uh, various products for uh, to address anti-infective uh, parasites, uh, grooming products, nutritional therapeutic products. So there are 10 to 11 products which are already out in the market. Uh, from quarter two onwards, we're also looking at more and more products to address, uh, to, uh, to launch in the pet division. Um, speaking of the distribution and supply chain, it's, for now it's going to be very similar to what it is for the poultry as well as animal healthcare divisions, where it's going to primarily be through secondary uh, secondary sales, wherein we have appointed distributors, uh, we sell through veterinarians, because quite a few pro quite a few of our products from the eleven products that I just mentioned are prescription based products, so they will have to be given via veterinary doctors or retailers through prescriptions. Uh, so this is the this is the model that we want to follow for now. If I speak of the sales and distribution, uh, like I mentioned, uh, the the we've made sales in the last one one and a half months only because before this we were establishing the products and we establishing manufacturers um, with uh, such that we could keep up keep uh, keep up keep the product quality. Uh, intact. So we wanted to uh, identify manufacturers that could do justice to this one prerequisite that we had. So a lot of our efforts have gone into all this backing planning in the last four months, and hopefully from the second quarter we will, uh, it will really the, the top line will start shooting up. And of course from Q3 Q4 onwards we're also going to look at uh, launching more and more products in this division. Thank you. That completes our uh, presentations. Uh, we now await uh, questions. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Thank you. We take the first question from the line of Ankit Kanodia from Smart Sync Services. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, so my first question is related to uh, if you look at our uh, uh, revenues. So from FY19 till today, uh, so it has been close to that 180 to 100 mark. And uh, uh, we all know how our plan of uh, Nepal and Africa have been delayed for whatever reasons it has been. Uh, and on top of that, we have uh, scaled up our, our team to uh, to manage the new uh, set of growth which we expect to come. Plus, there has also been some expansion plans going for uh, which is under the way. So, is it, uh, I think it would be fair to assume that uh, probably the margins and the return ratios for FI23 would take a hit. However, what would uh, give you the confidence that uh, maybe in FI24 uh, things are going to look up if you can uh, give some color both qualitatively and quantitatively that would really help you. Uh, so was it your observation or is there a question? The question is... Uh, the question is basically uh, how, how confident we are that uh, FY23 and FY24 would uh, would bring uh, would bring back some growth. Which because if you look at uh, years before FY19, we were a uh, I growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
uh, what has happened is I agree with you, you know, uh, <clears throat> 20, 21, uh, I mean, more than that, 1920, 2021. Yes, there has been a little bit of disruption from what uh, we should have been otherwise. But it's somehow, and, and, and what has happened is all our expansions also came during that time. So it makes us look even slower than what we should have, what otherwise we would have been. Had there been no expansions today, we would have been in a much more comfortable situation as far as profitability and all that is concerned. But everything all happened to the same time. Recessionary condition, same time. Our investments, same time. Geopolitical situation, same time. But uh, I'm sure in these coming months to come, coming one year, um, we will be able to completely turn around and we will be able to reach up to the expectations as what we have built for ourselves, what I have uh, made known to all of you and uh, take it further. It's not that I'm trying to not give a specific answer, but uh, there is a level of confidence in me uh, to make sure that all these things will turn around completely. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, my next question would be related to the companion animal uh, uh, market, which we have recently started. Uh, any ballpark number, as in when do we see uh, this becoming a uh, a number in terms of sales, uh, where it would be uh, meaningful to our overall total revenue? Any guidelines or any uh, target we have in mind? Yeah, I could uh, take that uh, question um, instead of Priya. Uh, see, the pet business is a completely different marketing as against the other products. Other products are B2B, pet is B2C, and even creating demand, there is an emotional quotient involved in pet business as against a pure economics uh, for the other production animals. As for our... Uh, forecast as per our uh, um, you know for financial planning in this financial year itself we should be we, we should be able to break even as far as the sales are concerned and going further how big we would be yes there are plans made but we would not really want to get into discussing this at all these uh, at this point of time i mean we have been passing through tough times for the last 2 years just let us breathe and let's just put our head down and take it further trust me this division is also going to give us a lot of pride and a lot of awareness we would be the only company in the country that has um, uh, you know, business for production animals as well as pet animals. Great. Uh, so my last question would be related to the uh, uh, Africa business. So now that uh, the commercial commencement has happened and uh, uh, we do have a sizable capacity over there, so any ballpark uh, guidance you would want to give, and not looking at as a number, uh, per se, but... Uh, in terms of uh, capacity utilization, any target we have in mind? Uh, 80%, 60%, uh, 100%? Uh, what is it? I see any, any vaccine plant built anywhere in the world, you know, the capacities are always higher than what it is needed at a point of time because the, uh, the costs to make it a little bigger are humongously high. So we have got a good sizable plant even if we are able to achieve around 20% of our production capacity within the next uh, around six to eight months time, we would be more than happy and it would be as per our forecast. Thank you so much, sir, and all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Rehan from Sikomoro Advisors. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Am I audible? I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. Sir, your line is echoing. Are sir, you now hands free? I would request you to please switch to your handset. Yeah, I'm switch to the handset. Better, I can hear now. Yeah. Uh, 
So, um, what would be the reason that we made an operating loss in the animal health care segment? Sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. Mr. Dhyan, can I request you to please disconnect and call back? There's a lot of disturbance from your line, sir. Can't sure. hear you. Sure. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Manish Jain from Golmar 1 LLP. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, first question was uh, just a housekeeping question for uh, Nikhil Jabbar on the pending capex for FY23 and uh, planned for FY24. And what is the current gross debt and gross cash on consolidated basis? Uh, standalone, it is uh, 154 crores, and uh, CFS, it is 256 crores. Uh, and as regards the pending capex, uh, maybe uh, I need to also work it out. And uh, very nominal, uh, Manish Ji, uh, capex, all the capex has happened over here in Africa, everything. It's just that now this capex has to start giving results. Excellent. And uh, including the uh, including the COVID uh, drug substance, that also capex has already been uh, incurred. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, I just wanted to know on uh, uh, avian influenza, uh, we are talking of sales only in uh, exports or both India and exports. India and exports start off with India. In fact, the moment we got this notification, we have floated it out to many and we have started getting inquiries for the H9N2 avian influenza vaccine. But uh, we will start off by selling in India. And in the meantime, of course, international um, countries, uh, other countries, you need registration. So that would happen subsequently. But it would happen. Moving on to lumpy skin disease, uh, given the kind of uh, very aggressive flaring up of the disease across Indian, uh, especially in Gujarat, Rajasthan, Punjab and other states, uh, should the demand come from the market, are you able, uh, able to satisfy all the demand which can come up? Yes. It could be a little staggered at this point of time because the rush has just suddenly come in. But uh, we, by uh, you know, by uh, let let it be in September, we should be absolutely capable of giving. And uh, uh, sorry, uh, by end of August, mid September, we should be able to give as much quantity as desired. Okay. And my last question was, before I join in the queue, was on, uh, we have mentioned we are making some change or improvement to the Brucella vaccine. What exactly are we doing on that? Uh, so we acquired the technology from government of India uh, to produce a subunit vaccine, and they call it Delta Par uh, Brucella vaccine. Delta Par 2 uh, Brucella vaccine. So that's the technology which we have acquired and government is also waiting and they are supporting us fully, pushing us to give that, uh, make that vaccine. And uh, in terms of improvement, it would be a little less costlier vaccine in terms of manufacturing and uh, it would give as much or better protection. Okay. And just one related question on lumpy skin disease uh, was... Given the kind of disease prevalence, do we also have a complete uh, lumpy skin disease treatment option uh, that we offer right now? Uh, see, lumpy skin disease is a viral disease and there is no direct cure for the lumpy skin disease. But as always in us human beings also, whenever there is a viral attack, you address the bacterial infection and that reduces the intensity uh, onto the uh, animal, in, onto the cattle. There is no direct treatment for lumpy skin disease. Prevention is the only method at this point of time. 
Great. Thank you so much, and uh, I'll join back the queue. Thank you, sir. A reminder to the participants, please switch to your handsets while asking a question. I take the next question from the line of Mr. Mithun Ashwat from Kiva Advisors. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, in your segmental breakup, you've given uh, in press release, you've given vaccines and uh, other. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Mithun. Just give me a minute. Hello? Give me a minute. Let this echo from your line. Hold on one second. Hello. 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 Mr. Mithun, you may go ahead with your question, sir. <clears throat> I think we have lost the line for Mr. Mithun. I am taking up the next question. That is from the line of Yash from Mandelwala Family Office. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, am I audible? Uh, yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, great. Uh, so, sir, can you talk a bit more about, uh, you know, this uh, lumpy skin disease outbreak? Uh, how severe is it and, you know, how does it affect the livelihood of the dairy farmer? That's one. Uh, secondly, have the vaccine supplies uh, for this disease already started for us? This is in India. And, uh, you know, what could be the revenue potential opportunity for us from the lumpy skin uh, disease vaccine? Okay. As far as, uh, first I'll answer your question on lumpy skin disease. It is a severe, it is a massive problem to the uh, cattle owners because the cow falls sick and it gets lumps all across its uh, body. It also gets fever and there are other symptoms. In fact, if you go on YouTube, we have even uploaded a film on lumpy skin disease, so which would help you understand the disease itself. It's a viral disease. There is no other cure for it. And it also results in complete stoppage of giving milk. And, and death is the end uh, in many cases. So it's, uh, it's a very big loss-making uh, disease for the uh, cattle farmers. It's a disease which is of very high economical importance for them. As far as the vaccine is concerned, <clears throat> We produce a vaccine called the goat pox vaccine, Uttar Kashi strain. And the goat pox vaccine is also effective against lumpy skin disease. Internationally, there is also another goat pox vaccine, which is uh, 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 effective against lumpy skin disease. Even International Animal Health Organization also recommends that. So having made the goat, goat pox vaccines around two years ago, the same vaccine is being administered against lumpy skin disease, but at a higher dose. In goat, you give it as 1 ml. In cattle, you give it up to 3 ml against LSD. And it is Uttar Kashi strain. 
we have already been producing this vaccine for two years. It's just that we have had to ramp up the manufacturing and we have to supply it. Supplies have already started in a reasonable big way. In this month and next month, it would be an all all time higher supplies that we would be making on the lumpy skin disease vaccine. And and the potential revenue opportunity for us, if we just take those three or four states where where the outbreak is. Um, I I mean uh, it could go in a few crores. See, it's very difficult to give exact uh, opportunities in terms of vaccine, and you know these are. Uh, we would not even want to get into those specific uh, details and discussion, but it is an opportunity, opportunity which could take us absolutely to the next level. That's what I can tell you for sure. Great, great. That's very helpful. That's it from me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Mithun from Kiva Advisors. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir, I can hear you clearly. Yes. Um, I just wanted to understand, uh, you know, the kind of capex that you've done in Africa, now also in India, you're doubling your capacities. I just wanted to understand by when do you think these will actually get utilized? Uh, because right now, I think you have the problem of plenty in terms of capacities of both, say, the COVID vaccine, the uh, uh, vaccines in Africa as well. Now, even in India, you're doubling capacity. But if you're not going to see demand uh, from the poultry and these other spaces, how are you going to manage to grow and optimize these capacities? Uh, because it's been quite a long time since you've you know, put up even the African facility and nothing has actually you know, taken off. Um, that was the first question. Second question was on the uh, 60 crores in terms of uh, amount that you will receive as a grant. Uh, uh, for the Covaxin facility that you've created. I just wanted to understand if Covaxin does not take off, would you still uh, be able to uh, get that grant? Uh, that was my second question. Yeah, so let me answer the second question. It's a multi-purpose facility. And even if uh, we, at the moment, it is planned to make the Covaxin uh, drug substance, which we will do it in the next few months, and uh, so there is nothing that is going to stop BIREC from giving us, uh, completing the whole grant. I mean, we have already received the first grant, so there is nothing that is going to stop us from that. And after producing this vaccine, we are ready to even repurpose the facility for any other vaccine that comes up. But nothing is going to stop uh, BIREC from giving us the grant amount. Okay, that's, that's good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, and the first question is capacity utilization across all the plants. As I what uh, you know, as I mentioned even in my talk that today, it appears that uh, we have everything. Uh, you know, m more capacity, less sales. Yes, this is a typical phase that we are going through at uh, this point of time, but. Uh, Things are going to change as far as Indian capacity is concerned. We are very sure of uh, the demand that is going to be uh, coming up over here. These new cattle vaccines are going to come up. Poultry, this is only a temporary situation. Yes, the temporary means it could be sometimes for two months. It could be some, sometimes for six, eight, ten months. But it is surely a temporary uh, situation with this H9N2 now being allowed in India, of course, we would have a marginal sales increase, but internationally, it has opened up a completely new uh, territory uh, and an opportunity for us. And our facility was made in any case without even taking H9N2 or anything. It's not that now we have H9N2, so now we feel that, oh, now we are secure. There is nothing of that sort. We are anyway in good shape and... Uh, we will be, the demand is going to go up and we are going to be taking it further. African continents, we have had innumerable meetings in the last three, four years uh, with all countries, all Department of Animal Husbandry assembling, all confirming the requirements, everything, including the meetings have been attended by FAO, by the African Union, 
there is a lot of dependency on this plant but unfortunately covid geopolitical situation you know everything is just added on together which there was uh, nobody had even expected this so give some time and i'm sure all this would straighten out if you ask me exactly when 2 months 3 months 8 months 9 months i am not able to give you a absolute picture because nothing of these things are in my hand but at the same time i would not say anything is out of control demand is slowly improving uh, let's uh, let's take the case of uh, hester nepal we never had an idea that we would sell even more than 1 or 2 lakh rupees material in a month in uh, um, in in the country itself over there today our local turnover has reached to nearly approximately 6 crores uh, or uh, something of that sort and uh, it is increasing uh, it is even increasing day by day so as we are moving as the situations are changing we are also adapting ourselves and we will make a headway and we will get through all these things as i said it's not that i'm wishing it's not that i'm optimistic i am reasonably confident when i say i am confident is that being prepared for the worst and then working for it it's not just optimism oh we hope for the best so i think uh, we just need a little time and when things happen for example lumpy skin disease had we not had all these capacities this vaccine bot goat pox vaccine nobody in the country was willing to buy the goat pox vaccine 3 years ago we were the only company then another company bought the technology and we bought it thinking sometimes let's at least buy the technology keep it and today look at it i mean this quarter and the coming quarters are going to be quarters for lumpy skin disease vaccine never ever we would have experienced thought that we would have this much of sale so Uh, i mean these are all vaccines diseases covid the world rushed to make covid vaccines the people made millions and billions uh, in terms of doses in terms of money a lot work uh, got done so i mean we are at it and this we have created an infrastructure that could help us do many things in the near future sure sir that sounds good thank you thank you very much A reminder to all the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Dhanraj Jain. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, Rajiv. Hello. Can you hear me, Rajiv? Sorry. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. Uh, as I understand, Animal Health Care Division includes health care products and vaccines. Yes. Yes. So uh, while going through the results, na no, segment results, I see there is a loss in animal health care in the year end in March 22, and every quarter there is a loss. So yes. on 48 crore sale, we are losing uh, one crore 68 lakh something. So what yes. would be the break break even sales for this? See what has happened is that with increasing in little sales, we have. invested a lot on the marketing and on the distribution side okay and uh, we recruited nearly 50% more people than what we had last year and we are now more or less nearing towards a break even analysis and uh, uh, i think uh, nikhil around 4 to 5 crore rupees of additional healthcare products will be added to so uh, sir uh, around 4 uh, to 5 crore rupees of additional sales of health products gives the break even uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, segment uh, of annual anyway, uh, health products okay okay and for vaccine and vaccines we are anyway we are we are i mean we are profitable okay and sir my uh, next question is regarding this consolidated revenue Huh. I see that uh, standalone revenue and consolidated revenue for June quarter is almost same at uh, five. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It is the same. Despite, yes. Despite there is a uh, in note number six of the auditor, they have shown the revenue from the subsidies at uh, some nine nine crore. So yes, they, they enter transfer or like what? 
no no so what happens is uh, we are required to uh, give the details of all the subsidiary uh, okay. texas life sciences which manufactures health products sells it to hester and hester then in turn gets sell to third parties this turnover of subsidiary gets eliminated uh, uh, both in the sales and purchase and that's the reason it doesn't get replicated into the console results but Uh, as a procedure, related party transaction. Yes, yeah, because it is a related party transaction from company A of Hester to company B Hester itself. No, yeah, but there is a revenue from Nepal and uh, Africa also because they are not must not be supplying to you, na? No, no. Uh, Nepal and they are not supplying, but no, no. then those sales are very very minimal, very very low at this point of time. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Rayan from Sikamoro Advisors. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, sir. Am I audible now? Ah, uh, yes, you are. Yeah. So, sir, my question is with regards to the consolidated segmental results. Ah, uh, for the June twenty one quarter, you've shown an operating loss of thirty six million in the animal healthcare segment in these results. so last year this was shown as a profit of 6.8 million just wanted to know what the reason is for this divergence and if it is re reclassification can you please class, uh, clarify what has been reclassified sorry if you can uh, uh, clarify 6.8 uh, i am not able to get we are looking at the consolidated results correct right consolidated results the segmental result where you have uh, shown uh, animal healthcare so the 6.82 Was a, a profit that was shown in last year's results. Okay. While it's not shown in this quarter, I think something has been reclassified. Is what I assume. So I just wanted clarification on that. Uh, maybe I uh, can I just look into it offline and revert to you on this so because not, right now I don't have the number with me. So maybe let me have a look into this question and revert to you offline again. Sure, I would appreciate that. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Alisha Mahabla from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you for taking my question. I just wanted to understand that we have multiple um, levers for growth that are all aligning for the uh, remaining part of this year. So, uh, opportunity from lumpy skin disease, the PPR tender that will start. Uh, the co-vaccine opportunity, if it does, will come from Q3, Q4, and also we have we, we have we commercialized three vaccines, or that we are going to commercialize three vaccines in Africa. So, what is the kind of growth that uh, uh, the company is aspiring for for this year? Uh, for uh, Africa, we have already commercialized uh, three vaccines or four vaccines. Four vaccines we have already commercialized. One is about to get commercialized, or that's already commercialized. Four. Yeah, two are in the pipeline. Sorry, I earlier said five. Four are commercialized, and two are in the pipeline. So now, uh, uh, in terms of sales from Africa concerned. we are looking into uh, the sales to a few governments specifically for the cbpp vaccine as well as the newcastle disease in poultry gamboro in poultry and uh, uh, even the lumpy skin disease worldwide from there so these are the opportunities that uh, we are looking at i would it would be a little difficult for me to give a quantification of these things at this point of time uh, but uh, overall uh, i think uh, uh, by next quarter we should be able to generate reasonable amount of sales over there and we hope that by mid next year we are already break even as far as africa is concerned um So that's helpful, giving us some color on the Africa business. I'm saying on the overall consolidated business, considering the opportunities in India, or the lumpy skin, which are saying in India plus globally plus the PPR tender, etc. I'm saying on a consolidated basis, what is the kind of growth that the company is targeting for this year? Ma'am, this is the, I have the same answer for you. What I answered earlier, uh, we are working towards it, and. Uh, Uh, the 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 lumpy skin opportunity is uh, is huge i don't want to give you the figures you can wait for our next quarter results for that the ppr tender is 20 crores uh, fao 
wants to buy nearly half a billion b uh, not million billion in ppr vaccine the moment that starts i think we would be grappling to even put in one or two freeze dryers to make sure that we supply to them it's just that this has not happened at this point of time ma'am okay and with respect to your margins while you did mention that your gross margins were impacted because uh, vaccine which is a higher margin business so uh, uh, de grew this year uh, on an overall basis what is the kind of sustainable margin that we're working with uh, you know we could go back to our margins which were there a year and you could be rest assured that we would be at the least uh, up to those margins which we had at the least uh, so i think uh, we are for sure you know our gross margins we would definitely be uh, in the higher 60s uh, up to 70 we should be able to uh, touch those uh, margins our pat we have been talking at around 35 to 40% we should be able to manage those uh, margins uh, um, so i think that's what we are looking at okay thank you thank you thank you very much we take the next follow up question from the line of mithun from kiva advisors please go ahead sir yeah hi um just a question on some of your subsidiaries um i think the african you have a distribution company which you set up where you have only 50% stake and you have texas life which you have a 50% stake and the nepal subsidiary also you're not a 100% owner any reason for why having minority or or you know majority but not 100% uh, stakes in these subsidiaries and could it be easier for us to kind of consolidate some of these entities since they are a small organization why so many uh, entities have been created uh, thank you okay <clears throat> trishul in uh, africa tanzania is was an already existing distribution company and we proposed and they agreed up to 50% so therefore the 50% and we feel that being a distribution company i mean it is fine as long as we have our foot in over there and uh, uh, and we are able to distribute we are okay with it texas was an existing company where we used to get our products manufactured we bought in equity so that we have a larger control um, of that business so therefore we bought up to 55% as far as nepal is concerned uh, we have a local partner and uh, it would be uh, very interesting for you to know our local partners are there him electronics who are assembling samsung tvs over there and it's just that we went to nepal and we were uh, at one time point of time looking at a 100% subsidiary but after being there after meeting the local people we did think that there is value addition in case if we have a local per, local person and therefore we went on with that model in nepal and we have a local uh, partner who is absolutely non executive in every which manner everything is been managed uh, by our team um, and uh, so you know all these things there has not been a fixed calculation in terms of balance sheet towards 50 55 it's like a partnership evolves and we make that person as a partner and we go on with it so that's the way it has been in uh, africa we are 100% uh, owned uh, we are, i mean uh, hester india owns 100% of uh, hester africa we have gone fully our way Uh, because uh, there was no reason to look at any partners and uh, uh, we even were working with the gates foundation we had a lot of internal strengths towards that and we went alone so uh, i would not put any logic it just evolved that way right so that was very helpful just one other point uh, i think there was a very large tender the government was talking about in the order of 100 crores for the brucella vaccine and there was a very large development that the government was looking at for the whole animal health care and i've recently read even i think you have uh, been appointed uh, uh, um 
you know, uh, at a senior position um, for the same. I just wanted to understand how is that rollout happening? You're talking about this other vaccine, PPR, where the size is 20 crores. Uh, but can we see that, uh, that the larger game plan that the government has for animal health care being rolled out quite quickly now as uh, COVID dissipates, and the government focus comes back on other uh, issues? Yes, government focus will come back on, it has already rather, FMD, Brucella, rabies, PPR, now lumpy skin, even goat pox, sheep pox vaccine. It is putting in a lot of uh, uh, thrust in all these areas. And in days to come, it is going, all these things are going to become uh, big. And uh, we would be there at a time whenever, when, I mean, when that comes, we would be there and we would take the business forward. Brucella tender last year did come out. We did bid, bid. We were L2 and we did not agree to the terms to supply at the L1 uh, rate. Therefore, we kept ourselves out of it for this one year. Now, this one year is about to get over and there is going to be retendering again. Right, so I just wanted to understand because you're part of that national committee for advisory. Yeah, I just wanted so, to understand what is a more of a three, four year strategy of the government in terms of size, outlay that could yeah, so help so us kind so of understand the opportunity. Yeah, so the committee has been formed. I'm definitely a part of it, but no meetings have been called so far. So we are hoping that a meeting would soon be called, but it is with a clear intention to put a thrust on animal health and mainly on the prevention side, mainly on the vaccine side, to may ensure that uh, uh, you know the preventive uh, medication, preventive care is taken so that diseases don't come out, uh, don't come out because it is always more expensive in terms of treatment as well as in terms of loss when you are trying to cure a disease. I mean, you have already done the damage. You have lost eggs. You have lost milk. You have lost meat. All these things. And then uh, you try to cure it. So government is very clear in looking at prevention medication. So one of the objectives of this committee would definitely look into preventive medication, which is vaccination. Right, sir. I'm just trying to understand in terms of outlay, anything the government has talked about. No, 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 no. Government has not spoken anything about the outlay. They had the earlier budgets to which they have allotted money, but uh, no, now they have not yet specifically spoken on the outlay. Okay, sir. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for the day. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Uh, yes. As always, it's been always uh, it's been nice to interact with uh, everybody on the call, and as it, it not only that I am giving information, but some of the questions also put our own minds uh, to think, and it gives us also ideas, and it keeps us also as much alert. And um, as usual, we'll again come back uh, onto the next quarter call and we will take all the questions, etc. There was one question which we were to take offline. So for that, uh, our uh, CFO will take that question offline. He has already noted the name of the person and he has also got the number through the listing that we get over here when we are addressing the calls. So thank you all very much. And... Uh, Hope to again speak to you in the next 90 days' time. And uh, I would also like to, I would also put across, uh, I would request Priya if she has anything to say. Uh, thank you all for joining today's call. Uh, while our Q1 results have been a little bit disappointing, but we do have a lot of hope to, and um, I mean, we have reasons to believe that in Q2 and Q3, we will pick up. Um, also, with respect to companion animals, some of you did ask a few questions, and in our press note as well, uh, we don't, we have not given too much information, but uh, we shall, I mean, if I get a chance offline, I will be more than happy to speak about it in detail with any of you. 
Uh, but yes, we are working on this division fully fledgedly such that the dependency on any one division or the stress on any one division, like the poultry or the animal kind of gets distributed. And also it helps us achieve our objective to become an overall animal healthcare company. Um, so I will see you all and talk to you all in the next quarter. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. On behalf of ICICI Security, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Okay, thank you.